What's going on guys? This is Gains Gaming. Today we are going over my account at 1500 days into playing the game and actually comparing it to when I was 1000 days in the game and see how my account has grown over the last 500 days. If you guys like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe down below for more Rise of Kingdoms content. Let's get into it. First of all, I want to start with VIP. VIP is what I really struggled with before I got to Kingdom 1079, which is a higher spending kingdom than what I've been in in the past. Now, this is an A-seed kingdom that sometimes touches Imperium, and it is much more heavy with spending. So I really never got gold chests before migrating to 1079, and now I actually get gold chests fairly regularly in 1079. And so, you know, when you get more gold chests, you are going to get a lot more VIP and this is what helped me get my VIP up to VIP 17. Because as someone that doesn't really spend in the game, you don't really have any other chances to get VIP besides gemming it. And that's really all you can do. And so when you're in a higher spending kingdom, you get more VIP. I have actually gone from 1,296,000 VIP up to 2.6 million VIP. I have more than doubled my entire VIP since entering Kingdom 10s of 9, which is absolutely insane. I was literally VIP 15 when I was at 1,000 days in. So about a year and a half ago, I have now doubled my VIP. Now, this is important because it's not only saving me resources, AP, materials, not only just all damage or training speed, but also materials, which adds up so much. Getting these material choice chests is absolutely insane, as well as you know, continuing to get the three legendary commander sculptures every single day is vital as well for progressing your account. Now, one thing that has also changed over the last 500 days is getting all of my buildings up to level 25. Before, I did not have all my buildings at level 25 because I just didn't really see the need to. But when you have events that really reward you for having all maxed out buildings, just like having all maxed out tech, it does make a difference. And so I did upgrade all my buildings, including the state form, all the way up to level 25 because, you know, at this point in the game, you should have all your buildings maxed out because the benefits outweigh the negatives, in my opinion. Now, when it comes to city skins, I really didn't have any when I was at 1000 days in. I now have Twilight Falls, which gives me 5% skill damage for the cost of 10% infantry attack, which as someone that uses two infantry units kind of sucks. However, I think the skill damage outweighs the losing 10% attack. I also just recently bought the Persian Dream, which allows me to get 3% extra healing speed. I bought this at the end of my last KVK. These are the really the only two new skins I have from before at 1000 days. But, you know, having the 3% healing speed, I'm not going to use this in the open field, I don't think, because, you know, I mean, the troop defense is good, but I'm really just going to use it for the healing speed to save on speed ups, because honestly, that's what I'm going to be lacking from from now on, just because resources I'm really good on because of my farms, but speed ups are where I'm going to be hurting the most throughout KVK and fighting. Now let's compare my stats from 1000 days in to 1500 days in. So when I was 1000 days in, I was at 77 million power. Now I'm at 82 million power. Obviously, that's going to change here and there as you kill off troops. But kill points are where it really changes. Now, I was at 2.2 billion kill points at 1,000 days in. I'm now at 5.6. I have more than doubled my entire kill points. Now, on top of that, my dead troops have gone from 11.5 million to 24.2 million deads. So again, more than doubled my total amount of deads as well. Victory, I have gained 100,000 more victories and then another 800 defeats. So pretty, pretty outstanding difference there between victories and defeats. And then if we look at resources, I went from 16.5 billion resources gathered to 24.5 billion resources gathered, as well as doubled my resource assistance and then gained another 30,000 alliance helps. Now looking at the kill points and the distribution of those kill points, at 1000 days in, I had 105 million T4 kills, I now have 175 million T4 kills, and I had 55.9 million T5 kills, I have now almost four times that at 193 million T5 kills, which is the majority of my total kill points. Now when looking at commanders, this is really where it makes me feel old, because looking at the commanders I had before, I'm like, how on earth did I feel these marches? And like at the time, I had all the meta commanders. I had Nevsky, I had Scipio Prime, and I had Boudicca Prime. Those were the three commanders I was using as my three main marches. I was also utilizing Metmed, I was using Guan as my primary for Scipio, 
and I was using YSG with my Boudica. So, you know, I had a lot of viability with those commanders, but now I have way more commanders to use. And obviously we have way more commanders in the game as well. With commanders I'm using as Zuge, Joan Prime, Luce, Hukabing, Scipio, Nevsky, Boudica Prime, Alexander the Great, so many more commanders that I'm using now at 1500 days that I was not using and didn't even exist at 1000 days. Now, I think equipment is where my account has changed the most by far. I will show my previous equipment and my current equipment and what the difference really looks like. So this is my top infantry set. I have all legendaries amongst all of my five marches. I have my T3 Horn of Fury on my Luce that is also special talented, my only special talented Horn of Fury. On my second infantry march, I have all legendary again, almost all iconic besides the shield as of right now, but I also have my war drums on there. On my best set of cav gear, I have a T3 Ring of Doom that is also special talented, as well as a special talented chest piece for the Hellish Wasteland set. For my second set of cavalry gear on my Hookah Bing, I have all legendary once again, along with a Mora's Web. And then for my final set on my archer gear, I have a full legendary set with the Dragon Breath set, as well as the two-piece leadership set as well for the pants and the boots to get the extra health and troop defense. Now, at the time, I had 16 legendary pieces and one special talent, that one special talent being my Horn of Fury. So I was one out of 16. And so going from 16 legendary pieces to 40 legendary pieces, more than doubled my total legendaries. And now I have five special talents, which isn't crazy. I'm five out of 40, which is kind of pathetic. And one of those crits is from my fifth Ring of Doom. So that doesn't really even count because it wasn't a natural crit. It was like a guaranteed crit that I got. So really realistically, like four out of 40, which is about 10%. So it is on track of what you're supposed to have, but that still just feels so, so, so low. Maybe I'm not the only one that feels that way. I feel like some people are extremely lucky and they have so many crits and other people have literally like nothing. Now, looking through my resources, I really don't dig into my bag very often because I simply just don't want to. And looking at the resources I had at 1000 days in, I thought I was like just absolutely loaded with resources in my bag. And now I see like I have like triple or quadruple what I had before in my bag now because I literally have not opened a single token of anything, not even gold, in well over 500 days like probably two years now that I have not opened a single thing in this tab because my farms will do everything I need for me. So like if I look at this, this is a billion wood. And then this one is three billion wood. Like I have so many resources here that like my farms supply so many resources for me too. Plus I have all these from barbarians, barbarian forts, alt pick one chest, like resources I will never run out of. But speed ups are a different story. However, looking at speed ups, now compared to 1000 days in like this feels really low for me right now but looking back at my 1000 day mark my 60 minute speed ups which feels really low right now because i was well over like 12,000 in kvk and i drained these pretty heftily i was at 2060 minute speed ups now i'm at 6500 and this is low for me right now looking at three hour speed ups i was at 1700 now i'm at 4500 but obviously being in a spending kingdom and spending alliance, you're going to get a lot more speed ups. So, you know, as you're opening up all of your gifts, like there's 16 hours of speed ups right there. And so these will add up over time. And, you know, during different events where people are spending more money and buying gold chests and you get some speed ups like that adds up too. And on top of that, being in a kingdom that gets at least like two of these a day because everyone is rallying barbarian forts 24 seven, like that goes a long way as well. Now, one thing I also want to talk about is AP, because like I said, we are rallying forts all the time. That is where I spend a majority of my AP potions. Now, I definitely spend a lot of AP during KVK, trying to chain barbarians, do barbarian forts. But looking at the AP, one thing I do remember is at this time, I believe at 1000 days in, so 500 days ago, you were still able to get unlimited 50 action points from barbarian forts, which no longer exists. You were capped at 7000 AP every single week from the Alliance. So when you're opening these chests from the Alliance, you're capped at 7,000 per week and then nothing over that. So kingdoms that you know are typically in higher seeds that are very active, that rally a ton of barbarian forts, they are the ones that you know were nerfed the most because they were getting a lot more AP and now you can only get 7,000 a week, which I mean, yeah, that's still good, but it sucks that you went from unlimited to only 7,000 a week. 
Of course, you can get more by rallying barbarian forts yourself. So when you are rallying barbarian forts, you can get unlimited on your own. So, you know, you're incentivized to actually rally the forts on your own as well and not just, you know, let your alliance members do all the work. But if you rally the barbarian forts or you join a rally, you are incentivized because you actually get more benefit because you're going to get extra AP as well. Now, one thing that we did not have in the game when I was 1000 days in was the armament system. This is new within the last year, year and a half. And so when I was a thousand days in, this simply did not exist. So we are going to show what my armaments look like as well, because I think this is going to be a good idea of like what it actually looks like when I'm 1500 days in. And, you know, obviously everyone that was playing at the time of the release of the armament system has you know basically the same amount of time. I have never bought a single bundle for armaments whatsoever. I have never bought one of these. I've never bought the seven day armament supply. I've never bought any of these. So this is completely free to play from doing the dispatches, from doing the traveling, from winning KVK, losing KVK, uh, getting luck obviously is huge, opening these up is huge. And so these are my current armaments and inscriptions that I have on my marches. So we'll go over my Zuge first since he's the first one up. So this one, I have Robust, I have Vitality, and I have Deflector. So taking less skill damage, extra 7% health. So, you know, I have 16% health, 16.6% health, 3.7% defense, and 6.1% attack on my Zhuge Liang. On my Joan of Arc, I have Hunter, which is when we won KVK. I added this onto my Joan. So Hunter, I have Embattled, I have Guarded, I have Vitality for health, and I also have Shielded, along with about 12% Cav health already, 4.3% Cav defense, and 4.8% attack. Um, I still have one Epic on here as well, so you know, hopefully eventually I'll be able to get a Legendary on there. However, I do have an Inscription on that one. I have Shielded, so I'm getting an extra 2.5% defense anyway, so definitely not going to complain about that. Looking at my Luce, Luce is kind of tough because I do use Arch Formation with him, which I definitely could switch to Wedge and still probably have pretty good stats. I might have to look into that in this next KVK and kind of see what I can do with that. I did add a robust this KVK onto his first one here. So getting an extra 3.5% health as well as Hardy for 2.5% health, War Hunger and Pursuer along with 5.2% health, 5.7 defense and 5.2 attack as well as 3.3% march speed. Now going on to Hookah Bing. Who could bing my second cab march? I have hurried, I have ward, which I really like. I also have guarded, brutal, vitality, and hardy. This one by far the most amount of stats on. Now, like right here, it looks super low with health, and it's like holy crap, you have no health on your hookah bing. But I have seven percent health in just the inscriptions alone, so that brings me to eight point six percent health. I have six point eight percent defense, ten point eight percent attack, as well as 09 percent all damage. So just having you know six different inscriptions is pretty crazy there as well. And then looking at my Guan, my second infantry march, I have robust, I have hardy, I have brutal and vitality. So just in inscriptions, I have an additional 8.5% health plus 7.4% health down here as well. So about 16% health, 6.1% defense, and 5.4% attack. Now, before our next KVK, we did just skip KVK, so we won't be going into it right away. Hopefully the next time we get a popular match for, I really hope so at least because I'm ready for KVK, but I know some people aren't resource-wise, but we will be doing a stream with formations and opening all these up. I'll be hoarding these until then. Plus, I also have transmutation stones to use up and the transmutation crystals. So we will definitely be doing a live stream or two about armaments and just, you know, diving into that. Maybe I'll have someone come on and help me out with armaments as well. We'll have to see uh, when the time arises. But if you guys enjoyed the video, do me a favor, drop a like and subscribe. Let me know what you guys think about my 1500 days playing Rise of Kingdoms. How long have you guys been playing? Because I feel like 1500 days is a lot, but I know a lot of people have been playing way longer than I have because I started playing back in 2020 and the game was released in 2018. Because I know like Chiss School started when the game first came out. So I started in, you know, end of March of 2020. So I just hit four years recently, about a month and a half ago. And, you know, some people have been playing for six plus years, which is honestly insane. So let me know what you guys think about this update and about the comparison of 1000 days in. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. I appreciate all of you guys. The amazing growth I've had here. Really, really appreciate all of you. But thank you so much for checking out the video. Have a great rest of your day.